President Buhari approves $8.5 million for evacuation of Nigerians from Ukraine. And Senate approves financial autonomy for local governments in the country. This is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. President Muhammad Buhari has approved $8.5 million for the evacuation of Nigerians from Ukraine. About 5,000 Nigerian students have been affected by the ongoing war in Eastern European countries. Uh, the Nigerian government had expressed desires to evacuate its citizens in Ukraine. Well, joining us to discuss this is public affairs analyst Sonny Obi Maduka and former special advisor to the River State Governor Openabo Inko Taria. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good evening, Thank you, Miriam. Great. Uh, good evening, Nigeria. The, 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 the biggest question on everybody's mind is why did it have to take so long for the Nigerian government to decide on evacuation of some Nigerians? I'm going to start with you, Oponabo. I mean, you've worked in government, so I, I try to, you'd try to help us understand why government had to drag its feet on this matter. Well, uh, Marianne, so, uh, a lot of us. Uh, it, 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 it doesn't come as a surprise because we have uh, a government that is listless when it comes to the welfare of Nigerians. You know, I mean, I have a plethora of examples to give to bolster my, my assumption. A government that plays hard up with the lives of Nigeria, even within the country. Otherwise, uh, countries like Ghana uh, evacuated uh, their citizens, I think the last part of just even yesterday, and we are talking of evacuating uh, Nigerians from Ukraine today, and the president is just approving. I will tell you, the bad is placed on human lives, especially in this country. We have a government that is not sensitive to the plight of Nigerians, and that is just the reason. Otherwise, one cannot fathom why. Look at when the Russia-Ukraine war started. And it's, it's about a week now, and this is when the president is approving the money for the evacuation. And the, the Minister for External Affairs is proudly saying that the evacuation will commence today. Notwithstanding the uh, danger that these uh, Nigerian citizens and students are facing abroad, notwithstanding their flight. So everything is just treated with levity, especially when it has to do with Nigerian lives by this very government. It doesn't come as a surprise to a lot of us. It doesn't come as a surprise to a lot of us. Hmm. We don't, we don't proact, we react. And this is one government that is known for its dilatoriness in every state. Even look at the electoral act. In everything, you know, the president has said it, he cannot wait for 2023 to office. So he is actually tired physically, intellectually, mentally. The man is just tired. And that is affecting governance in the country. He said it, it's not what Oblavo said, that he just cannot wait for 2023. Hmm. So the man is tired mentally, physically, psychologically, everything. Is tired. And so government means nothing to him anymore. It's as simple as that. Interesting. Let me come to you, Dr. Madika. It's interesting uh, that Upunabo seems to be blaming uh, the government's um, drag, feet dragging on Mr. President. Uh, but then, Mr. President is just one person. Yes, he is the commander-in-chief, but then we do have legislators. These are people who supposedly are representing the interests of the average Nigerian, and it took them this long to also come up with ideas on how to push the, Mr. President um, to get to give a nod for the evacuation in the first instance. So can we solely place this blame at the feet of Mr. President only? Yeah, I think uh, Tara has just said it. The entirety of uh, whatever we're going through is right on the president's table. The president is our father. So as a father of a nation, Every of your citizen matters. And unfortunately, 
It's only the country that the president doesn't care. As at now, he has jetted out to to UK for two weeks, uh, uh, whatever you call it, medical checkup. A, a time that your children are dying, a time your children are suffering. As a father, you're supposed to have empathy. This is a time that you, instead of you traveling, why don't you get these physicians back to this country? I, I, and I was looking at the president I was when he was going, and there was no remorse, nothing that showed that this father is going to lose some of his children abroad. This is unfortunate. Look at it this way. We are approving 8.5 million right now. This money wouldn't have been up to this if we had been proactive. But just like uh, Tara said, we're always reacting to issues. This war didn't start today. There was, there was uh, notice. People, many countries were, on, you know, were doing something. America evacuated. A lot of countries evacuated. What happened to a, a country called Nigeria? In fact, it was even appalling that the, the, the minister of, um, of uh, South Africa said that it is not the government priority or responsibility to evacuate. That, to me, is insensitive. At the time your children are trapped and you are bringing in issues that shouldn't, what is the average value? What is the value of an average Nigerian to this government? So if you look at it, I'm still wondering, I'm still waiting, because let, let me tell you, you know, <laughs> believe this government is like saying, like I said it before, it's like saying that tomorrow we are going to the moon. You know, this government has always come on lying spree. Yet they said about the problem we know what is happening to the uh, I think we're having connection issues there with you, Dr. Madika. We'll try to try again to see if we can connect with you. But back to you, Opuna, but there are claims that there are some Nigerians who didn't want to go anywhere. They didn't want to come back to Nigeria. And there are still people who still do not want to be evacuated to Nigeria. Some are saying, look, you know what? Send us to Russia. Um, in fact, um, we hear that about 150 of them are looking to be evacuated into Russia. Uh, instead of coming back to Nigeria. So could it also be that uh, people would rather, you know, go to Poland or neighboring countries other than Nigeria, maybe because of reasons personally, uh, I mean, best known to them? Uh, and again, why would people not want to come home to Nigeria? Because most of these people are students. Let's not be economical with the truth. It has nothing to do with reasons best known to them. It has to do with reasons best known to Nigerians and the world. What could be those reasons? I mean, there is despondency, there is dissidence in, in the system. You know, a lot of people have lost, not just because they don't like Nigeria, it's because it's the, the reality. There is so much hunger. The country, as you speak right now, is rudderless. Now you can imagine other countries have been evacuated. They've made frantic efforts to evacuate their citizens. What has happened to Nigeria? A, the ambassador in UK told them that they must have to defend themselves. How ridiculous and insensitive can a man be? It was after the criticism that they had to retract that system. So in such a country where you don't, there is no hope if you come back to this, a lot of them don't have hope. If we had sound educational system, they wouldn't have traveled abroad to Ukraine. What are they going to do in Ukraine? Not even in, in America, not even in Britain, not even in uh, uh, Canada. Of Ukraine. Most of them left out left this country out of frustration. So what are they coming back here to do? And as bad as uh, Russia could be in terms of uh, uh, leadership style, leadership paradigm, it is better than Nigeria. If they are not segregated again, I tell you they'll have a better life in Russia. Because here yeah, what I come back to? No life. Most of them can't even pay their fees. They can't even speak. It's frustrating living in this country. Really frustrating living in this country. So, they're, they're so are you saying that Nigerians would rather because die in a war in a war torn country or a country that is no, about when, to face no, war they, when they, than when come they home say, to a peaceful say, country where there's no war? Say, relatively peaceful. Relatively peaceful. When they say Russia is not war torn, that's why they say. Uh, 
I, I was I was making reference to Ukraine, not necessarily Ukraine, um, Russia. Ukraine is Washington, but not Russia. Ukraine is Washington, but not Russia. And because if there are so many places in Russia, I don't think Russia has been touched. If Ukrainians are just trying to defend their territory, I don't think they have invaded Russia. I don't think so. So they are opting. They are also opting for Poland. They are opting for Hungary. They are for Romania and so on. Yes, they also leave Ukraine. But the truth is, those who are even resisting, those who say they want to wait and observe what's going on, are saying so because they don't have lost confidence in Nigeria. Most of them don't want to come back. And it is simple, like I said. Poverty level. Apart from the poverty level, despondency. You know, when there is hope, there is light. So a lot of them no hope. Even those that are here want to check out. No hope. So what are they going back here to do? And they believe, they believe that somehow they could survive it. That is their belief. They don't want to come back to Nigeria and not and, and, and most of them, because if they come back, they will not be able to go back. So they don't want to find themselves in that situation. So let us remain here, because we they strongly believe that I did one might not press that, especially with the intervention of uh, 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 foreign countries, the war might not press that. And that is their belief. So let us remain here, rather than jeopardize our chances by going back to Nigeria, and we'll be refused entry into this country anymore, or any other country. You don't know how a lot of them even left the country. You know, through very complex and difficult ways. So they want to remain there. They don't want to come back there. Okay. It's actually, it's actually a case of uh, between the devil and the BBC. That is just the situation that they found themselves in. Let me go back to Dr. Maduka. I hope that we have Dr. Maduka back. Um, let's yeah. look, let's cast our minds back to some of the things that have happened over the years in terms of Nigerians in other countries. We've seen cases of um, Nigerians being killed in other countries. Um, I mean, we had the issues in, of xenophobia in South Africa. We saw that young lady that was killed in a prison um in um i can't remember the country now um we've seen several cases we've seen a nigerian official a director in our public service who died in a hotel room uh in south africa and to, till today we're yet to uncover um how that woman died in that hotel room even though the pointers showed that she was killed not like she went to sleep and then she didn't wake up we've seen several cases where nigerians could have been saved but half the time we always show up last minute or as an afterthought. And many people are also saying that this situation in Ukraine was an afterthought. I mean, yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, a uh, former uh, member of the National Assembly, Ben Mori Bruce, had said, we have so many uh, millionaires in this country and billionaires. Why can't they send aircrafts to those countries uh, to evacuate these Nigerians? I mean, and I'm guessing that these Nigerians would want to go to any other country, or every country of their choosing. I mean, Ukraine is bordered by a lot of these countries. But I want to ask, how did we get to a point? Because both of you seem to be in agreement that this particular government is not necessarily uh, placing value on Nigerian lives. But can we say that... Um, can we say any different about other governments that we've had? I mean, as opposed to this government of President Muhammad Buhari, or are we just giving a dog a bad name? Well, let, let, if, if, you, if you start from uh, 19, 1970s, you discover that Nigeria is, that was when we got... Uh, Dr. Uh, Madika, that, okay. Uh, I think that we're having issues with your connection. Giant of I think we're having. Can you hear me? Can you hear okay, me? Okay, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, uh, it's not working. Apologies. We have to go back to open up, open up. I think I heard you trying to come in there, but go ahead. Oh, so, can, so, so sorry. Can so you hear me? <laughs> okay, let me change my. Just let me change my my. Okay. Let me change my. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Open up. Yeah. Yeah. Just go yeah. ahead. Yeah. What? Yeah. What was the question? If we are just trying to vilify this government or is a Nigerian system? Yes. It's a Nigerian pattern. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, um, well, I will not say Nigeria, the Nigerian government has uh, always been so effective in the discharge of its duties. But if you have to make a comparison, I think this is the worst. 
And in the opening statement, or in the opening statement of the second one, when you said, why do we have to blame the, the president when you have the National Assembly? The president is the one that will give the go ahead. The National Assembly cannot. It is not within the bias of the National Assembly. It is the exclusive preserve of Mr. President to order. Because when it has to do with the release of funds for the purpose. But if it has to do with humanitarian, uh, if, it, if it's based on, if it's on humanitarian ground, the, uh, what's this, EPIS did it in the past with, in South Africa. EPIS is also, has also been engaged to do, to carry out the same, uh, function. That is on humanitarian ground. And you talked of, uh, Ben Bruce saying we have billionaires. What about Ben Bruce? What, what role did he play? Is he, he a billionaire? Do, do you categorize him as a billionaire? Is he a billionaire? That, that is it. That is it. No, no, no. Whether he's he a billionaire or not, the question is what role did he play other than criticizing the billionaire? Exactly. Exactly. You must, my, you, can you, me you now? must not be a billionaire to play a role. What role did he play? How much did he contribute? Because these players are going to buy fuel. So what was his contribution? Not just to sit down to vilify. These are these, these people are carrying out humanitarian jobs. They are not uh, most of I tell you what Eddie did in South Africa. They have to be commended. So it is not just to sit down there and castigate this character, castigate a uh, billionaire. What do they stop him from becoming a billionaire? Okay. Can you hear me now? All right, let, I think the okay, doctor is okay, back. Let, let's let's listen to yeah. what the doctor has yeah. to say. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, yeah. yeah, you know, I, I was I started with as a nineteen seventy and nineteen eighties. Nigeria benefited from what you call giant of Africa. You mentioned South Africa, you mentioned other countries. Recently, last year or two years ago, Ghana demolished our embassy. Ghana hoarded our people, our children, and I don't think that back. I don't think that that happened in Ghana. It happened in one of the francophone countries where we it's, were. It's in Ghana. It's in Ghana. It's well, in I think Ghana. in yeah. I think in the DRC or one of those <coughs> francophone countries, our embassy no, no, was also Ghana. sacked. Yes, but go ahead. It's in Ghana. It happened in Ghana too. So what I'm saying that the, the, the leadership today has messed up Nigeria. We want nothing again before the Committee of Nations. And that is why the Nigerians are being treated the way they are treated, even in that place. You can't treat a country that... I didn't hear South Africa complaining. If you watch, most of the complaints are Nigerian, Cameroon, and probably Niger Republic or whatever. Your, your country is dependent, or your, the value of your country is dependent on the leadership. Today, as, as just Tara said, no Nigeria is worth dying to this country because there's nothing that you can say this is what government is doing. They did the pyramid rice in Abuja. Where are the rice in human homes, in houses? So these are the issues. We have government that doesn't care much about the value of an average Nigerian. And that is why these young boys are living. They're not living because they love it. As I, I, I can tell you, as at 1970s, 80s, most Germans, most Ukrainians, most Americans, they were coming to Nigeria to study. And we have the best of academics. What happened? Because we have leaders who are selfish, self-centered, greedy. And unfortunately, Africa is, is, is just there as a continent, not adding value to the world you know, economy or what, whatever. To me, Africa is a liability because they've not found their potential in their safe world. If reality complex is still believed Africans. So until we come to the position whereby we can sit down and say, Africa, what do you do? And how do we do that? Maybe that's what I can tell you. Let me just give you some few uh, things I, I just thought about that Africa can do. Africa can come up with a common currency. That is what they can start with. They can come up with a common economic block. We have 1.3 billion Africans, and we have a big market that we can use to even be. be, be, be but we be have, proud. but we have the AU, and I mean, we have 
it, the echoers. It, it, we, how how it, how productive it, have those blocks been, whether they be economic or not? How productive have they been it, as blocks on their own? It, I'm talking about the echoers, which it, is for West Africa, and the yeah. AU, which is you know for all the African countries. Before we even consider then, a national a, a, a unifying time, currency. How unified are we as Africans? I was just seeing, uh, uh, I've seen a lot of messages on social media about how black people, black Africans are treated in countries like Mozambique, in Mauritius, in um, Tanzania when they arrive, as opposed to people who have a different color of skin. So really, um, I don't know how getting a, a, a joint currency or b forming another block let other me, than me. what we have is going to solve our problems. Let I'm me. wondering. Let me let me come. You see, what is happening today is the Europeans, you know, trying to see how they can cover up themselves. Africa, we have AU. AU was there when America invaded Libya. What did they do? Today, the only time you know of ECOWAS is when there's a coup. Nothing else. So that is why I'm saying that we must have another thing, our think tank that will give us an idea what really Africa represents. Africa, to me today, is just there. AU, nothing. Do you know that as a, what has happened to our children, AU is supposed to come out and talk tough, and talk tough against racism. That is now the opium of what we are seeing in this uh, war, uh, russia ukrainian war. It is racist. We have seen it. But what are AU doing? They are keeping mute. They, can't, they don't know that these children are African children. This is the time for them to come out and defend these African children. But where are they? So these are the problems. We need to go back to drawing board and know why do we have ECOWAS? Why do we have AU? Is it just because we are a continent? No. There must be economic viability of every economic block. There must be. And that is where I said... We need to really <coughs> strategize what actually Africa is. Okay. As of today, Africa is nowhere. And that is why our children are being treated as pariahs, as slaves, as, as, as nothing. Okay. Open up. In the committee, we have every person are looking and seeing. Uh, I'm sorry, again, I think we're having little issues with your connection, Doctor. But let me come back to Oponabo because we do not have too much time. Oponabo, I, Doctor has already set the pace for the issue on the issue of um, racism. We saw videos. I mean, this morning I saw a video of a, a Nigerian woman, if I'm not mistaken, on the BBC, um, uh, you know, recanting her experience at one of the borders, I think, in Poland, where they said to her, um, no black people. Black people have to walk, literally. Um, so only Ukrainians were allowed to go on um, the buses. Um, they were allowed to gain entry. You would see people with um, white skin climbing over the fence and nobody would stop them. But if a black person was pushing forward, they would push back. Um, and, and when we keep talking about these issues of racism, um, I, I go back to what I said to him. Africans are being also um, profiled by Africans in the African continent or on the African continent. Um, so what effrontery or temerity do we have to challenge the white person in Europe who is also being racist amidst the wartime? I mean, I've also heard stories um, of people saying that even our Nigerian embassy was asking us to show our COVID results to be able to uh, get any attention whatsoever. So how do we even defeat the problems that is us as Africa. How do we deal with ourselves before we can even turn to the man on another continent? We are, we are consumed. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. We are consumed in the very uh, smoke with bell stuff. It's all about perception. The question is how is your own uh, president or fellow African treating you? Yeah. I mean, if your own president or fellow African is dehumanizing you, how do you expect the world to respect you? It's a question of perception. And again, it has to do with credibility. Unfortunately, most Nigerians, when they leave the shores of this country, let me not say most, let's say about 
get involved in illegal activity. And so every African is being watched with a jaundiced eye. The possibility of him committing a crime. Mm. Every country is battling with criminality and they don't want it to be aggravated, especially by external persons and external forces. Because you have crime in every society. Mm. And so they want to reduce it, mitigate it. But they are suspicious. Now, you also said that even the embassy in uh, Poland was asking for COVID. You maximize the minimum and minimize the maximum. At this point, which rational being will ask for COVID from certificate from people fleeing from war zone? Who are your citizens? That should be their first port of call. That should be their first answer. But they have it. They have their first. Meanwhile, the whites, nobody is asking them. There are no uh, procedural obligations. They allow them to go freely. Mm. But your own ambassador is asking for your COVID certificate. Is that not ridiculous? That if your own person is afraid of you, it is said that if crocodiles could eat their own eggs, what will you not do to that of the end? Mm. If your own person is afraid of you, how do you expect the outsider? So how 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 and when how and when will Africa be able to stand tall? How and when will Africa be able to stand tall among the community of states across the world? How, when? I mean, because it all it seems the more we talk about these things, the more we have these kinds of conversations. It seems to me as it's becoming more and more of a mirage for us to be able to get to that point when the world where the world is, and we're still trying to play catch-up. How soon can we get to that point uh, with the situation of things on the ground right now? It will be a fleeting illusion if we don't get our leadership paradigm right. That is why. Nigeria was once respected worldwide. I can tell you, Maria, that in 1984, I remember vividly that I spent Naira in the UK. I was respected anywhere I went to. As a little boy there, Nigerians were respected worldwide. So it has to do with leadership paradigm. That is number one. I want to talk about leadership from the president to the minister to what have you. We must correct an impression. Once that impression is corrected, so most of these Nigerians that are even leaving the country is as a result of economic action. I will tell you this again briefly. We are, we are eight in number. Now, out of the eight, when we are going to deliver, we are going to school. From she asked, of blessed memory, who will want to school abroad, who will want to school here? A lot of us said here. Four in fact, school abroad, four of us said here. Why did you say here? Because of the benefits. Mm. The country was good. But now everybody, every Nigerian you have to tell you I want to go abroad. Every Nigerian you have to tell you I want to go abroad. That is the problem we're having. So it has to do first and foremost with leadership. We won't get that right because it has a domino effect. Once you get the leadership right, you're going to get the economy back. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Let me just. Uh, quickly, let me just we have just a minute. Doctor. Quickly, doctor. We have just a okay. minute. Uh, uh, yeah. Let me. Yeah. Let me just add to what he said. We need to have a long-term strategic planning process in Nigeria or Africa. There's none. As of today, we have all this one-year budgeting system. It doesn't work anymore. <laughs> China has 50 years. China 50. Years. America has 20 years. Each day we keep on padding our budget with a percentage. It doesn't. Uh, apologies. Work. What is the, in this? Is, what are you looking for? What do you want? I just uh, Tari has just said. Tari has just said about leadership. If you don't get the leadership, we will all keep on, you know, going around the same corner. Our leadership is too, too, too. I don't even know what to call leadership here because they are not leaders. They are not leaders. I'm it's telling not you. Leader. They are not Maybe let me now add the, the, the most important one, your security architecture. That's one of the things that will give you power worldwide. What do you have? We don't even have anything. We can't manufacture common guns. Those people that are even manufacturing within the local have been arrested instead of encouraging them. 
So these are the issues. So when you get the, when you with nothing, what, what can you do? Uh, okay. Putin has already won all African countries. If you dare, I will deal with you. Did you see how all of us stayed like a uh, chicken without uh, without? We have to go. <laughs> we have to go. Um, I want to thank you, gentlemen. We are out of time. Uh, Dr. B. Madika, we want to say thank you for being part of the conversation. Uh, we want to say thank you, Opunabo and Kotaria. Thank you so much for being part of the conversation. We have to go now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we'll take a short break. When we come back, plus politics continues. Stay with us.